wart from her ass removed, and now he's running the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. <laughs> Oh, you just make sure the oxygen gets into the blood tube and you're fine. No one knows. Wow. The anyway, hey, everybody. Welcome to Between the Rolls Murder Hobo Inks talk show on Tuesday nights. I am Kyle. I'm your wonderful. <coughs> I'm, I don't have that low, lustrous voice that Scott does. And mm. even while I try to emulate it, it's not coming across quite as well. You tried it and you. You tried it on Thursday night. So Did I try on. it on Thursday night? I don't remember. You're on a ship. <laughs> hey, you're doing the Rod Serling, man. Yeah. Rod Serling. Okay, well, uh, I'll take that as a compliment. I'm young. It, it was good. It was good. But I like so. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, no, this is Between the Rolls, the talk show where we talk about the last three games we had. Maybe we'll talk about the next three games we do, and we'll talk about some random subject. <laughs> Tonight, what? it's called On Natural, and we'll be talking about <laughs> we supposed to get critical failures and successes. You can tell his wife's out of the house tonight. Oh, she is so <laughs> oh <my> gone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, uh, for those of you first following us, uh, uh, we are on Twitch. I think we're on Twitch right now, so you can follow yeah. us. Yeah. Follow us on Twitter. You can take a look at our archive on the Twitch archive, or YouTube. You subscribe for that. YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, no, both of them. Both of them have archives. Mm. One you have to pay for, the other one you don't. Twitch. Does, does Twitch have an archive? Twitch has like uh, four or five of the last. Yeah, videos. there's not that many. And on we're going to be talking a lot about the campaigns, and both of those are still on the Twitch archive, so you can still do that. Uh, if you want to uh, talk about D&D stuff, you know, you see us here and you want to talk to us, but then you're like, damn it, I'm watching on YouTube. I can't actually make comments. Well, then you can uh, contact us at our Discord channel. Uh, if you want to get some cool RPG swag, like some, say, Murder hey, Hobo I don't, shirt. I don't know if you can get the one Carol is. Can I get that one? Face. Uh, but I you can try that on our one. store, Tiny URL. It is somewhere in the general vicinity of where I'm pointing. Ooh, phone cases. DJ just bought that on a shirt, by the way. Nice. Ooh, nice. That's classy, wow. baby. <laughs> and most importantly, we do have a one shot coming up this Saturday. If you want to participate, hit us up at mhobo inc on Twitter or at our Gmail. Uh, and then let's thank the sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, for when you're rolling like shit. Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, and then a special thanks to our sponsor, Oddfish Games, and their Adventure Sense. Uh, it didn't quite smell like fish, but the sewage smell was there that uh, you would smell on a ship. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and everybody on the campaigns and the tri generational have some coming, uh, courtesy of Adventure Sense and Oddfish Games. Thanks, Mike and Jen, for now, sending. Did they put that hazardous warning on the package or did you send them the nice there, there was no putrid sewer this time everything oh, is, everything is thanks. nice so thanks that went out today i'm excited i can't wait to get it nice. all right one final thing uh if you don't want to look at our ugly mugs while we talk about dnd oh. but you still want to listen to us go to the podcast we have those there's a link also somewhere on the screen right here Unless there's not. Uh, uh, you, and then, you and I are at the bottom, so it's... Ah, it's on the inside. It's one of these. One of the, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then check out our store. Ooh. Ooh. Or look at our podcast. <laughs> no one can see me doing the Vanna White, and that's that's a damn shame, because I've gotten really good at it over the years. Uh, sure. Keep telling yourself that. Yeah, no. Uh, last and final thing I personally want to mention is I completely forgot to thank our artist D, who made portraits yeah. of everyone in the campaign uh, except for David. There is apparently some beef going on there uh. between those two. Uh, Wait, well, how David's come? Demanding. Wait, how come Kyle? You should have used the uh, DM portrait for Kyle too. By the way, I I actually need a picture of him, and then I will morph it. Because oh, that, uh, that one I actually did myself. Oh, so you put oh so your pictures, your your faces in there somewhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, I didn't realize. I thought that was. That's right. It was the so mysterious well the image. The you seduction. Know, image. You know, it's funny because I, I was wondering it, why I had a half chub looking at it, and now I know. That's why. why yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that mysterious seduction. Well, remember, remember that dwarf family I played? You played a dwarf family? Yeah, I had I had their whole lineage down. I have a picture of me with fresh out of the shower hair. Oh, that's ever. right. That's right. <laughs> I got that picture. I almost used that one in place of the dark, mysterious hooded figure. <laughs> so I, I much thought, better. <laughs> I thought that might have scared children. <laughs> well, wow. you know, it's mature audiences only, so hopefully there's no children watching. I meant Ernie. <laughs> Other than Ernie. None of us are mature, so any one of us who are on the cast, you know, watching. Okay, hey, no one actually knows about last between the roles. For all they know, we're good, honest people who've never said anything <laughs> racist or anti-Semitic or... What did, you do? <laughs> what did you do I last week? I had to drop week? like nine minutes off the front end of the show. I like, so I take oh, a for the week audio. off. <laughs> so this is what happens when I take a week off. It just now, goes to, to shit. To be fair, I believe we insulted <laughs> everybody. Yeah, that's yeah. the way you do yeah. it, man. You Except for white everybody. people, of course. You can't touch them. They're because they're stupid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we really are. <laughs> yeah, we're a bunch are, of we're stupid and whiners. Yeah, oh. <laughs> that makes me feel sad. Bunch of Karens. <laughs> There. Are you guys recapping or are you dicking around? I think uh, everyone's been insulted. Uh, producer wants to know when we're going to recap instead of dicking around. <laughs> well, I have to buy and make sure there's enough time to recap and then barely talk about what we wanted to talk about. <laughs> so, That's exactly uh, what's going on. Extensive... Banter. They come for the banter. They don't. They I mean, do come for the banter. I mean, it's not an extensive, you know, topic tonight. Uh, it is not extensive. I told I was you hoping... how. I did tell you how we could expand. No, 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 no. Let's say I was like, yeah, let's make it a very small topic. If it ends up being more, we'll do another one. But then we can talk about both of the campaigns, like the Thursday night campaign. Uh, Cthulhu comes, everyone dies. Uh, Carol, I think, um, were you there for that one? Did you play in that one? I don't know. Did I? I, I don't remember what I did last Thursday. Recall. Why don't you I, tell us what happened? I think I, oh yeah, I was there. I was totally there because ha, 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 I get to play in the first. Oh, by the way, this is Carol. Carol, introduce yourself. Oh wait, yeah. Did about. you want actually? To, to touch no, I don't. Do we that we skipped that last week too because uh, we didn't give a shit. I, everybody <laughs> should know who I am by now, but if you don't know who I am because you're just tuning in, <laughs> she good is full luck. Of herself, isn't she? Oh yeah. Well, you know, if you Shut check up. the uh, sexual predator registry, you'll see Carol. No, She's right there at the top. No, <laughs> uh, no. Now it uh, is an older photo where that unibrow is in full effect. <laughs> <laughs> she shaves now, guys. That's right. She, <laughs> she's she's hiding. Well, yeah, that's what the bangs are for, right? You know, hide it there. Um, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Our producer's getting caught. Shoo. Uh, All right. So, well, anyways, to well, fine. I'll just mention myself as my name's Carol. I'm a longtime player, digital GM, and commission mini painter. Maybe someday I'll sponsor the show too. <gasps> like Pirate Dog does. Oh, what bad things could we say about your painting? I mean, <laughs> wonderful things we could well, say. You do they're right behind, just... you know. There's, there's, I get a few things right behind me. Um, whatever you do you realize to sponsor a show, you have to pay them, right? I know. Okay. <laughs> you are going to get the same rate that Pirate Dog Dice gets, so <laughs> Which is sorry fine. for your luck. <laughs> <laughs> this. That's a lot. Uh, no, I can't say it. I can't dog say it. <laughs> That's dog walking. <laughs> so, um, all right. So what? they put... You put a leash on him. Take him out. I have a potty problem that needs rectified. <laughs> See, this is what happened last we year. We just all wandered off for guys. 20 minutes. No shame. No shame. Oh my god! No shame, no dignity. This is what no happens honor. when you see. This is what happens when a. I'm not yeah, on the show. stock up B, on puppy pads. B, I'm, <laughs> this is what happens when I don't run the show. It goes all out of control. Uh, all right. So, anyways, 
What happened? Wait, hold on. What? Perfect. Eight ten. That's exactly when I wanted to start the. Uh... Oh my god! Actually, that's about right. So. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right. So what happened? And the first episode of. I almost want to say Cthulhu Rises because it's Rock's Fall. I don't know why you didn't go with Rises, but Cthulhu comes, everyone dies. I wanted the sexual innuendo if ever I needed it. <laughs> he got it. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, we four characters, we four, uh, yeah, four characters uh, got on a boat because we are going to this island to bring enlightenment and civility to it. Um, although I think most of us have reasons for going that are really have nothing to do with that. Uh, I think Ernie, Ernie is playing like a researcher. Uh, his, his class is a warlock, but he's big into books and researching. And I think he, he actually may be going there to bring civility and who knows, probably, uh, unleash an elder God there or something. That's awake his patron awake his patron i don't know i'm guessing here because i don't know any of the backstories uh and i don't want to know until they come out in game <coughs> um so actually yeah basically we we all get up we get on the boat my character had a really bad dream uh which is part of her backstory uh it wasn't a bad dream it was a bad dream well that was a pretty bad dream Oh, you were one of the ones watching that show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. And then, let's see. So my character's name is Anja, which we frigging apparently can't figure out how to pronounce. It's Anja, <laughs> not Anya. I don't know. I guess I must have screwed you up or something at some point. Yeah, when sense. you said, so it's pronounced Anya, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's sorry. Like, it's a post- okay. Anya, it is. Don't worry, folks. We'll figure it out. No, no, that's point. Anya, you know, the Enya. singer. <laughs> so then I would have played another bard. Uh, but I'm playing, uh, in this case, I'm playing a ranger, and when she gets to third level, she'll be a monster hunter. We also have Bran, a monk of uh, actually, he's going to go Divine Soul, and uh, he is Good. of the that's Raven an Queen. Class. No, what the hell is it called? Fuck. Way of Mercy. Divine soul. Way of Mercy. Way of Mercy. For Sorry. the Raven Queen. No, the Divine Soul is Caitlin, who's playing Cleo, who is a Divine Soul sorcerer. From a royal family, yes. Yeah, from a royal family, and she's got a babysitter that accompanied her. I kind of feel bad, but I have a funny feeling there are reasons for that babysitter. Because she asked you know. for it. Did oh, I don't know that. <laughs> What? Can, what? You leave me to draw my own conclusions. And they said, and Ernie's playing Warlock, uh, who is also a big bookworm slash yeah, researcher and such. And a couple highlights, because honestly, you should just go watch it. It really, it, well, if I do say so myself, it was good. It was a lot of good role playing. Hey, yeah, we had role playing in it. Holy crap. Uh, and there was a pretty good fight at the end. Um, but I think the highlights would be Ernie and Nat ones were went hand in hand. I think a lot of our dice rolls were kind of shit, but he he had to. One, he pretty much poisoned half of us, aka me and Bryn, uh, with and the, the captain and the captain with the friggin' by rolling a one to cook potato soup. Uh, and then uh, he then he rolled. Oh no! First he rolled a Nat one to run the ship aground. And then they took him off of that and told him to go peel potatoes, and then he fucked that up. But he got a lot of inform- interesting information from, I can't think of her name, the lady down there, the cook, who would talk about potatoes and a whole bunch of other things. She was quite informative, and I think he loves to hang out with her now because she's got a million stories and, and information that he can write in his book. Um, that was a good moment. Uh, I can't remember what else happened. <laughs> Because uh, that was the big thing. I said there was a big fight at the end with pirates. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, and I remember I ended up on the deck of the ship. Yep, 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 yep. But thankfully, we have two healers, and one is DJ. And even though we all know Caitlin's ability, hopefully, Caitlin 
you'll figure out the healing end. I know you really like to blast stuff. So well, to be fair, she had two spell slots. She did. One she cast cure wounds. The other one she cast burning hands. That's no, fifty percent right there. Am no, I wrong? yeah, you're totally wrong. No. Actually, I liked, but I I really liked what she did at the beginning of the fight. Was she got out there and she cast an AOE that hit a couple of them. So I thought that was a good move. Um, no, it was fine because we all fit, but our monk, of course, is also a healer. So between all of us, we're probably going to have enough healing in this group uh, so that if some, you know, somebody can pick up the ball or whatever. But it was, as I said, it was a great time. It was a, it's a good story. And I think it's, we're going to be in for a very wild and interesting ride, uh, especially since we are, there, there's a reason why it's called Cthulhu Comes. And because he's probably going to come and fuck the world. Yes. Uh, this, is, this is Sandy Peterson's uh, Kazoo Mythos. Thank you, Critical Role, for stealing our stick. But he is, but Kyle is running off of that. Is there anything else you want to add, Kyle? I just wanted to put a few highlights and watch the a few show. Highlights. Uh, yeah, you could watch that show. You can also watch the next show. Uh, either way. The next show won't Whatever. be for another. The next show won't be for a week from this Thursday because both campaigns are bi-weekly. Because Frank, and on I don't the think same it. Same week. Yeah, I know. I'll, I mentioned that too. Whether or not we should do it the same week or alternate, but but Frank didn't feel like killing off cacophony so completely. So we're right in the middle of something. We are going bi-weekly and alternating with the cacophony crew, which is fine. I'm not hurt at all. No, not not at all. Some people get to play every Thursday. <laughs> I wonder thanks, who that thanks is. for the recap, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Can no, I see you, your manager, please? You know That's what, you, our word. Hey, wait, 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 just think of this. If you take Tara and you put it with Carol, what do you get? You get Karen. So, hey, there you go. Hey, I, I never thought of it like that, but there you go, folks. That was the truth a, of it, folks. And that was a joke that was running around my old D&D &D <laughs> group, which I played Tarot in years and years ago, that he, he once screwed it up and actually called me Karen, and then it kind of stuck. So And now it means long something. Long <laughs> before, but it's not spelled the same. It's C-A-R-Y-N. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> ah, no, if I have to add anything to that, and we'll ask Frank to add anything to his campaign, I think there were like, uh, I really enjoyed running the first episode for a campaign. I think I had like, job. you did an awesome job that lead to further things down along the campaign. I know Ernie got one of them because I told him what it was. Uh, uh, but I don't think anyone else got anything too far ahead. So unless you watched, in which case, good on you. <laughs> yeah, I thought you nice. did real well. I thought it was I thought it was really good. And uh, <coughs> I think it's gonna be a really good story. A very long term story. We were going to what level fifteen at least? Fourteen at least. Fourteen at least. Probably for no go to <laughs> seventeen so I can bring someone back from the dead. I just want to go Jeez. to like 20. I want to go to 20 just to see what it's <sighs> like to play a level 20 character or 19. God. Oh, you know what I'm excited about? There are things in that book that they throw at you at like level 5 or 7 or 8 that I threw at a bunch of level 18 players. Jesus so it's Christ. like, oh, this will be great. <laughs> well, it's good we have all this. We'll have all this healing in the party then. <coughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Help. Yeah, when you do enough damage to freaking go past our, or to when you do double our hit points and kill us instantaneously, sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but let's stop talking about Cthulhu and let's talk about the Calamity campaign. Yeah. And with that, we have both the DM and we have the player and we have Carol and me. <laughs> yeah, I know. So let's huh? see how we can talk and oh. take jabs at them <coughs> as they talk about their campaign i know but, uh, david why don't you start tell us what happened and uh well tell us about yourself first and then tell us what happened okay hi i'm david i'm the guy that gets to play every thursday now so <laughs> <Thank Anyway. you. laughs> uh 
Uh, hi, I'm David. I'm usually here on Between the Rolls. I'm also on the Cacophony show that we have on Thursday. Oh, your other player, two of your other players are on tra- on the chat right now. Uh, apparently, my players were so intrigued that they could not help but to hear the recap at the glory and the spoil. I see it. That they themselves helped rain down upon Calamity that David's about to tell us about. Uh, I just I'm, thought that, you know, our players aren't retired yet, so that <laughs> they didn't have the time. Rob and okay, Scott sorry, are David. on chat right now. I'm oh, treating you like Carol, Scott. David, and That's I am okay. so sorry. That's all right. <laughs> hey. Wait, how come we didn't get Scott tonight? I thought he could make tonight. Because we had to have the two DMs. No, I thought he couldn't make it. Because remember, Valentine's Day is a week-long event at his yeah, house. Yeah, why? chat scott you said valentine's day was a week-long event see see david see she is crushing our fucking campaign time take a breather oh yeah drink some fluids get ready to go for around (laughs) 17 and a half we're we're gonna have to do (laughs) between the roles part two later on this weekend she uh, not be here (laughs) uh Hi, I'm David. I'm also on uh, our Thursday, our new Thursday night campaign. Uh, You're on the Saturday campaign. You're on the Saturday. Oh, shit, yeah. What are you talking about? Sorry. Oh well. <laughs> hold, on, one, hold on, hold on. When you're David, retired, David. one day blends into the next. So, yeah, but yeah, and, yeah. And David, you're playing in so many games; it's hard to keep. It is. I, know, it really right? is. I mean. Come on, you all. Yeah, you see, you think I play a lot of games. I got nothing on David. I think he plays. Twice I'm on a Thursday day. and Saturday, folks, and Tuesdays <laughs> on between the rolls. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, our new campaign started Saturday. Uh, it is the Calamity campaign. Uh, our first episode was called Rite of Passage. And basically, it started uh, with our four players. Uh, that would be myself, uh, Jesse our newest player, Rob and Scott. And uh, they have some amazing <laughs> characters. Uh, Scott plays our monk Rook here. Um, Jesse plays Azari, the Leonid Ranger. Um, Rob plays Dave, the Barbarian, which I love, by the way. Just, just the fact that he named his character Dave. That's awesome. And I play Ingve, our druid, Circle of the Shepherd, now that we're level two. Anyway. Our episode begins with um, our introductions uh, as characters into uh, the campaign, little backstory. Uh, and from that, we go straight into the story. And basically what has happened or what is taking place is that there is a great hunt. We've all become come of age and we have to make a choice what role in our society we're going to, we're going to fulfill. And, we just, uh, the four of us decided to try to buy for becoming part of the hunter group. Um, within that, we had to prove our worth as hunters or just as contributors to the, the hunting party and uh, go out on this great hunt. So uh, one of our uh, NPCs, uh, she's, um, what was her, her character name, Frank? Loki. Loki. Oh my Lokai God. Loki was the best. She was the best character she was the, the badass. entire night. She was a badass. So, yeah. So, I guess the second uh, name of this episode should have been Watch Out for Snakes. <laughs> because. Why yeah. does it always have to be snakes? It always has to be snakes. Come on. Anyway, uh, we go out on the great hunt. Uh, we have an incident with some of the local wildlife because we're walking through high grasslands. <laughs> uh, ends up in flying snakes. Uh, we have orc twins that are total douchebags. <laughs> uh, we have another in our party that actually gets bitten by the wildlife. And that's when my character suddenly becomes the Red Cross. Because <laughs> I just start treating people throughout that and that yeah i am the heel bitch for this campaign so <laughs> there's could've some great let him die i could have i could have but frank you always if you watch our thursday night campaign i mean show soap opera cacophony uh yeah 
I always get accused of uh, killing our, our NPCs, so or they die on my watch. So I wasn't going to let this happen for the campaign. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, great hunt. Uh, we're hunting. What was the name of it? Uh, the the wildlife, the buffalo, chattel, chattel, chattel. Yes. I wanted to call it chattel for some reason. Ch I, I think that's what I said, chattel. Okay. Yeah. Wild bison. Chattel or wild bison. Uh, so we spread out and we engage in a hunt. We engage the wildlife. Several of us uh, had split into uh, a couple of uh, different groups to kind of uh, corral the, the chattel into an area to where we can engage them. But unfortunately, one of our party, not, not a player, an NPC, ends up uh, getting gored and trampled by, that, by the chattel. Good job, Frank. Good job. Way to kill your own NPCs. Oh, dice, yeah. give us dice taken away. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So that's when my character springs into triage mode. Had to learn what triage <laughs> is the hard way. Uh uh, the hunt, hunt concludes, um, you know, we, uh, there's a little dispute between Rakir and the Orc twins about who made the kill on their channel. Uh, Dave the Barbarian uh, totally did not be in mi uh, mind being covered in entrails from the one that I exploded because <laughs> I rolled a nat 20. <laughs> so, uh, and burned him. And burned him. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God I'm the healer. Uh Let's see. There's some things you can fix, Frank. <laughs> uh, let's see. And um, as we concluded, uh, it took a little while for us to um, uh, basically to field dress our, our chattel that, that our, our party had killed. Um, the, the warriors start making their way back to the camps. Uh, it is getting close to nightfall. We finished with ours, and then suddenly we hear howling in the distance. We end up getting, getting confronted uh, with a dire wolf, and of course, a battle ensued in that. So we emerged victorious. We killed the dire wolf. Uh, we took various parts. My character is a leather worker, so everybody's getting nice stuff made out of uh, the kills. And uh, yeah, there's a joke about, you know, testicles and stuff like that and being within Lokai's back pocket. So yeah, just check out the show. It's a lot, of, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. The guys did an awesome job. So Rob, Scott, Jesse, you guys were awesome. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed playing. I enjoy playing with you guys and I cannot wait to play again, Rob. So yeah. Look forward to it. <laughs> the comments are interesting. Was the dead, was the name of the character that died? Was that a Tech Tech? Was the uh, one that died? No, Tech Tech, tech, tech was, was the one that got bit. Oh, okay. That's the one I like, saved. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. uh, uh, let's see. Who was it accused you? Uh, somebody asked if you were on the mushroom. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Rob says you must be eating the mushrooms right again. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and uh, and he also said he's gonna get that skull made into an ornamental headdress. I told, yeah. I told him. Yeah. I told him. I told him I would set him up with that because I'm Actually, the leather worker. So that's the neat thing about this campaign is you can really have a lot of fun with that sort of stuff. I think there's a lot of it's got a lot of fun potential to this. And well, I can't I, wait no, to see gee. it. When, when he makes that headdress, that will help him as he storms the capital in the capital city. So. Yeah, he becomes the, the QAnon shaman. So <laughs> here we go. Does see that, that make works. him the main? Does that make him basically he's going to be targeted by everyone too? Uh, it's me running it, so everybody has a big target on their back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he yes. he marked us during the, the show. <laughs> everybody got their blood marks. And yeah, I, that's I, right. You did. But, but David got a I got the red cross. <laughs> I got the red cross. <laughs> appropriate. Uh, totally appropriate. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. That was uh, only my <laughs> second time since I've been playing D&D &D to play a healer. Uh, the first was uh, for the Gen Con uh, one shot that Frank ran for one of the games. So uh, it was a lot of fun. My 
this isn't my first time playing a druid, but it's my first time playing a druid of this particular circle. So we'll just see how it goes. Uh, Frank informed us that we leveled at the end of the show that wasn't covered, but um, yeah, it'll be it'll be great. Then the next episode, good things should happen. We, we didn't level up after our episode. No, Karen, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, I. I'm perfectly happy taking the slow road to China, slow road to China. I'm perfectly happy going at a slower pace. Well, these guys killed three bison total mm -hmm. and a dire wolf. Uh, yeah. and, and to get to second level is nothing. Plus it will help me expedite it. This, this scenario actually had absolutely nothing to do with the overall campaign arc. It was just more of a, let's get them That's... out there. Let's introduce them to each other. Let's put them in some kind of conflict not amongst themselves, hopefully. Uh -huh. And as it worked out, it didn't. Uh, Scott's character, Rakir, went up against one of the half-orc twins, who is an asshole. Every NPC that they interacted with, they had a view of them, and, but not everybody had the same view of the NPC. So I went ahead and tabled it out. Uh, some thought he was an asshole. Some thought nobody cares some thought he was just hard to deal with uh and I, I just wanted to see how they interacted with the npcs thrown at them uh because i honestly thought at some point in time scott would go ahead and just try and kick the shit out of yeah i was waiting for nemesis it. <laughs> so uh he is going to be a thorn in their ass for at least a couple of adventures uh but hey. this has nothing to do with the campaign I don't uh, think we had anybody die in this because I saved the one that was saved both of them. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't think anyone had died, but hey. Uh, oh, by the way, just as a point, uh, also that I noticed is that Rob is has a contest on Twitter to name that axe. Oh, his axe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he wants oh. he wants admissions to to <laughs> name that axe. If, if, I, if I can think of something, Rob, because I know you're watching, I I will absolutely put something in there. Uh, but I can't. I'm having trouble thinking. Rob, there were a few misses. I'm calling it Pussy Willow. <laughs> <laughs> Prove me wrong, Rob. Come on. <laughs> it is a it is an awesome looking axe. Uh, yeah, our artist did an amazing job. She Rob really loves that axe. Did, man. So, I, yeah, yeah. I, all the pictures, all the the artwork came out amazing. It really did. Oh, yeah. so, I can't wait to see yours. I mean, I've yeah, seen you'll see. his actually see. turned out better than everybody's. I thought because really? he's got a yeah, he's got a a mark. Mm -hmm. so, uh, several. No, I mean, yeah. right. I got I got the tears. Not here. Not here. <laughs> I still say put them all out on Twitter. I'd like to see the whole lot of them. I can do that. That'd be really cool. Uh, oh, yeah. I think I'll probably make advertisements with them. Come see these four and figure out which gets the red X tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to die? No one. Because, you know, like like the end of the other. Who's going to make it to the end with the least amount of sanity? <laughs> that would be ours, yeah. Who's going to find their twin who gets stabbed? <laughs> One thing I wanted to ask, Frank, can we do a slideshow for our intro into the show? You know, that time period between the header and the mature audience thing or something sure. like that. That Sometimes it's a lot of time that burns. I think so. Um, we need, no, we we need like that. a theme song and then an uh, opening sequence. No. I'll, I'll say this with all sincerity. Fuck Making Twitch. Your way in the they world. You screw can. us over. No, no, you, you, you got. Obviously, people can do it because people put music all the time. But I think you have to prove ownership. And if one of us actually, it was it, right something. on the fucking screen. <laughs> it was uh, free CC and credit given, and they kept fucking us over. And I emailed them and emailed. Oh well, you know, I don't know what's wrong. Well, now I don't care. So, but yeah, we can do a slideshow for both campaigns. Yeah, just our portraits kind of fading in and out and stuff like. Do that. a real Monty Python one where we do the four pictures <laughs> and then bam a foot. <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh yeah, but God. then you get in trouble for for infringement of Monty Python. So, well, see, I'll, that's I'll where the that Cthulhu way. comes title comes in because it's like everyone. Oh, well, it should that. come then up you look and up eat and everybody. This... <laughs> yeah, exactly. you should just come up and you should just eat everybody instead of the foot coming down. 
voice for us. Now the oh. third, the third show oh, yeah, that's uh, right. is the tri generational one, and they would say, "Don't Shit. use a foot, use poo," because I have the tendency to throw poo on those guys. Yeah, that's I get. Uh, these guys were in Light Reach, the Halfling Village, uh, trying to figure out. All they wanted to do was pick up supplies when they got to this town. Found it filled with halflings, aka thieves, and have gone on a murder hobo rampage. Uh, the captain, we had all six players back. Uh, captain Haggis Crapstain was on the boat, and he and his crew found three unusual items on a stick <laughs> with a wick on it. So they decided to go ahead and light the wick, and they blew up the bordello, uh, Vintner. And well, they set the fishmonger on fire. Okay. And I forget which the something on the second level they blew up. Yeah. Uh, But they ended up using Roman candles and blew (laughs) up uh, while everybody ran from the angry crowd. Uh, They also uh, had a run in with Rodrigo Montoya. I was about to say, don't forget Rodrigo. (laughs) You burned his village. Now you die. Uh, and it turns out Rodrigo was a little bit more powerful than they thought he would be. Uh, and they made a hasty escape to the open seas. But they're planning on coming back to go ahead and hijack the uh, tribute to the god Lear. We'll see how that works out. Uh, maybe Sunday. I love it. I love the fact that Frank pointed out at the end of the show <laughs> that he could cast water walking on him after Copious went through. <laughs> okay, so one of the players. Uh, oh, water breathing. Deal, Sorry. Yeah, water breathing. Took a great deal of time to try and figure out how the halfling adolescents were swimming, figured out it was magic pellets, uh, and it proudly announced that he had found enough for everybody when the druid pointed out, well, no shit, I can cast water breathing on all of us. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like getting your brother's christmas gift and having to turn it over to him <laughs> poor copious his retirement plan just went out it just went up his in flames. retirement plan and his love interest uh both took uh, some serious hits so will these guys be welcome back in light reach not a snowball probably story. not <laughs> uh will they be able to investigate the dark blue spot where lear may or may not live yeah. time will tell uh, the tri-generational is uh, three levels of family, and they are a hoot. Uh, if you haven't seen those shows, go out on the uh, archive, go out on the face only uh, or audio only, uh, take a listen. They are hilarious. Um, Kyle, back to you. Back to me. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're here to talk about, you know, and it's in kind of relation to what happened with uh most games of D&D, the, uh, the crit ones, the natural 20s, and what do you do to help with that? I call this section Professor Weirdloath, or How I Stopped Worrying and Learned to Love the Crit Failure. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I love the crit fail. Yeah, Hold no, right. ones, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a DM, though. So. <laughs> I've ended up on the bad side of a uh, <laughs> critical <laughs> failure, and that's evident in our New Year's Eve episode. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, we'll, like, we'll, ex- <laughs> we'll explain. <laughs> sure. Uh, oh. Yeah. So I guess I wanted to take uh, both perspective from the players, from the DMs. How, in the case of a DM, how do you handle crit failures and? You know, do you go with rules as written? It's like, oh, well, you fail. Or maybe you just have a really sucky skill check. Or do you go above and beyond and have their player cut their finger off or poison a whole crew or or cut someone's head off? <laughs> and, you know, same with your nat 20s, whether, you know, that barbarian suddenly knows everything about the holy magical text in front of him or what someone's and, evil twin sister rolls two of them on disadvantage and that shits kebabs his sister by throwing throwing what was it a rapier when she was being held down by the barbarian 
Boy, you carry a grudge. Yeah, a real chip. On actually, the actually, the funny thing is, I love that flipping scene. So there's no grudge here. That was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so I guess the first question we'll ask, and uh, let's start off with you, Frank, uh, because you have uh, certainly come up with some of the most interesting scenarios, I think, for that critical fail or those critical successes. <laughs> and so I obviously think you're probably going to favor going a homebrew or whatever you decide happens. But how do you go about deciding some of those things and what happens to the players and it still being somewhat fair? Normally, uh, and all the players know, usually if you roll a one and you're in combat, you're gonna but you're gonna hit your buddy. Uh, now I am benevolent enough to say, okay, you're just gonna hit him for half damage because you know there is a certain amount of well, I'm gonna pull back if I realize I'm gonna hit Dave in the face. Uh, in last Sunday's episode, Copius was up against a guard dog mastiff when he rolled a. Uh, rolled a one and in lieu of stabbing himself in the foot i thought it would be funnier uh to have him throw his weapon away on the other side of the dog uh because then all he had was a dagger and he was pretty much screwed uh until the vintner blew up and sprayed everything with purple rain <laughs> uh but or ordinarily i like me a good what, whatever could cause the most amount of chaos for me. Uh, David alluded to his trials and tribulations on New Year's Eve. His role uh, ended up decapitating a halfling on a spinning wheel. Why? Because that shit's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was either that or hit one of the barbarians next to him and have him get his shit pushed in by three barbarians. Uh, so I went with kill on the <coughs> unarmed, helpless halfling just to ruin David's 2021. Uh, yeah. So I try and look at it as what is an opportunity to make it a memorable experience? David, I think. Uh, Still he, traumatized. I, <laughs> and Carrie will, will remember that forever. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll remember that one time. And I think when you get a player or, or a group of players to say, remember the one time as a DM, you've done your job. Uh, because that makes for a memorable story. It, it you know, oh, I, I killed the evil god Lothar. Da, 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 da. No, remember that time when I slipped and I murdered the halfling. Uh, that that's just D and D, folks. So I didn't I, slip. I threw an axe. You know, though, and not that this great has great precision. This has to do with crits, but you know, even better, the bad decisions you make too along the way. I made a bad decision and Frank capitalized on it. Oh, I was, it's, yeah. That's... I was drinking with barbarians, getting all riled up near, like, yeah, take a, have a throw. And I was like, yeah, I'm drinking it. I'm, you know, all cocky because I'm a bard. And I figured if I hit, hit him, I could at least cure wounds. You can't <laughs> fix the decapitation. <laughs> No, no, you can't. Was the halfling this tall, or was he this <laughs> that tall? <laughs> so yeah, I, I always go for memorable opportunities, and, and I will never forget it. <laughs> yeah, in lieu of that, hit your party member, because God knows you guys do that enough. Mm -hmm. that's, All that's right, quick thing. question then: as a player, once upon a time, long, long ago, what was that one time <laughs> where you critically failed that you still remember? Uh, it wasn't really a critical fail so much as it was kicking what I perceived to be a halfling off a horse. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it turned out to so be a young child. child. <laughs> uh, you know, we could we could turn this into more than just nat ones and, and yeah. crits. This this episode could be a whole lot more interesting. <laughs> yeah, a hundred years ago when I was a kid, uh, I remember going through the. Uh, Caverns of the Frost Giant Yarl with my buddies and I played like a jackass and I decided to charge down the icy slope, rolled the dexterity check, failed. Uh, the DM at the time franked me. I slid right into the Frost Giants and they chopped me up into smithereens. <laughs> 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 and I was... 15 so i can imagine 40 you years ago <laughs> you're gonna have to make a series of dex checks to avoid the axes <laughs> mr mr noah's like you want to charge down the icy slope into the frost giants yes 
All right, roll. <laughs> <laughs> nope, assholes and elbows. I got to the bottom and they're like, ah! <laughs> You're dead. You did. You did. Did 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 did. That's that, pretty good. Yeah, that's that's my memorable one. Aside from killing the kid on the horse. <laughs> kid on the horse. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna change bad. this to the stories we remember along the way. Oh God, okay. that's fine. I like that topic. <laughs> All right, David, on to you. You're a player most of the time here, but you also DM for kids <clears> as well. Uh, uh, how do you handle uh, critical failures as a DM? And then how are you open to the critical failures that Frank puts you through uh, uh, as a player? I'm not rolling his dice. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, with the kids. I was a little more lenient because, you know, emotions can run high for children. I mean, you kill their characters. I mean, they could be. Yeah. Uh, I kept it fun. Uh, when some, when they rolled a critical one, something funny happened. Um, uh, I did have a couple of times <laughs> that they do. Uh, I did, I did have a couple of times where, but it was an adult player that was, uh, playing in our group. Uh, they were going through, through, uh, a sewer. They had an encounter with an Atiag and during the battle whatever and these i really overpowered this <laughs> this thing but he was a turtle and he rolled a nat one on a save for a bite and i just said, <laughs> it just went right through your shell dude <laughs> so you know but uh but no like uh for example i mean like one kid i had they were they were fighting in a mage's tower they were in a room there was uh they walked onto a rug of smothering and the rug of smothering wrapped one of them up inside the, the, the thing because he rolled a one. And then I had somebody else in the group of kids roll a one too. So I had it to where a rune triggered the floor falls out like that and the carpet gets sucked down to the basement and it closes back up. So the kids like down in the basement in a car carpet of smothering by himself, but he, he, he came back, he aced his strength checks versus the, the carpet. And, but the kids just had a blast. They thought that was hilarious, you know, totally un <laughs> unexpected. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, Kids really find failure very, very funny. So you got to play it up when you're playing with kids. So adults do too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Adults do too. But yeah, you want to keep it PG for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> you, you sure you don't want the halfling decapitation for the kids? <laughs> no. <laughs> and then oh. you see this dwarf come running by and kicks one of your. Well, I, I ran two I ran two groups. One for juniors <laughs> where that that were like eight year olds, like eight to twelve year olds, and then the <laughs> others were twelve to teen. Uh so so yeah, is it just like that wasn't gonna happen <laughs> to the junior group? <laughs> it was just like uh uh. So yeah, because they were really young kids getting into D D, which is awesome. And um yeah, so yeah, I, I as a DM, you just feel out your players and, you know, you figure out what you can get away with. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, that was my approach to it. I also did, uh, I use critical failures or uh, successes on things with a high D DC, or if they wanted to do something that was, you know, not really within the, the rules, but, you know, I played the rule of cool. And if they rolled... A nat, uh, like a, a nat 20 or a failure, it either succeeded or, you know, or they, they passed it gloriously, you know, and played it up as that. So, so that, that's how I balance it. Uh, you know, uh, especially with the kids is just, you know, play it, uh, you know, kind of balance it between uh, failure, success and rule of cool. That's, pretty much the, the circle that I kept it with the kids. So. Sure. All right. And uh, down to you, Carol, uh, handling critical failures as a player. And um, I do. Well, I also GM, so. 
Oh, you also GM. I didn't you know, know that. that. I, I am I the did. occasional GM. I, I thought oh, you very, did that for very Pathfinder. Good. Yeah, I that's do. only Pathfinder, though. You so know, no one cares about that shit you know on this show. <laughs> you know what is so funny, though? I was just thinking is that the Pathfinders turned the whole critical and uh, critical success and failure into a friggin' art form. Because that's like now an in totally integrated part into the game itself. So like you have either extra good thing and you get, you know, they spell out like your extra damage or what bad thing happens when you critically uh, fail. Um, but as for like how to, yeah, I usually, I, I yeah, so I like David, try to keep it fun. But well, I mean, right there, that sounds like a bunch of butt hurt players who had a DM not handle a critical failure the way they would have liked and are now making no. rules about it. So it's like, no, well, your DM it's... can't do anything extra crazy. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Critical no. failure, this is what happened on it. I wasn't no. going to traumatize kids, Kyle. Yeah, but... <laughs> so, your, character, your character is drenched in oil and suddenly, you know, bursts into flame. flame and it's burning to death. Oh, no, there's nobody to put it out. You know. uh, that's not what it says on chart 6B hey, wait, of the right. Pathfinder had... Core rule book. Hey, wait. You okay, were... I apologize. So I had question. twins Continue. with Asperger's syndrome and Oh, yeah. you talk about rule lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but what I was going to say was, I mean, but to, to go back to the blast in the past, one of my favorite methods, though, um, was we had the old Dragon Magazine crit hit and fumble charts. Those that were is cool. fucking amazing. We had so much crazy shit happen because with those <laughs> charts, you could instantly kill something. You can have something with a thousand pit points, and if you rolled the right thing on the chart, you could instantly take him down in the first round. And I said one of my favorite, but I, I have a few favorite stories from that chart. But one of my favorite one, was was one. Make it brief. The no was uh we had a we had a gnome rogue, and I think I've told you guys this. We had a gnome rogue that basically had a sling, and we were fighting a giant, and it was like the first round. Um, I'm not even sure the giant ever even went, but basically he was in a, he was hiding in a box and he popped out and he rolled and he rolled an at 20 and on the chart, he rolled like a, somewhere in the nineties, uh, because the charts went up to, you, you have percentiles up to hundred on those charts. Uh, and he rolled something and it was a hit and chest stru struck dead. So we all, we all kind of laughed at that because basically a no, a, a gnome, a little gnome took out this huge giant with essentially the size, something like the size of a pea shooter. Sounds Because he hit him just in the, must have just hit him in the heart was just at the right, at the wrong point. Which way did he fall? <laughs> Hold on. It fell all players. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, were, falls, we were all, we were all still far enough away, actually. I don't think he fell on it. And anybody was in uh, range of him falling. Well, and please. it probably would have been our big beefy fighter, but that was that was a particular good one. I I, I like the way that yeah, Nat twenties could certainly and and fumbles. Um, I said the only the only thing I could think of that was really to me in terms of fumble wasn't a fumble; it was a bad choice. It was like you, I, I this was a this was an old version of Terror, and she was going evil in this game, and she could she can magically manifest weapons. It, there's a whole freaking huge thing around it. And I just, I, so I wasn't really in control of my character, but they asked what kind of weapon I'm like, ah, ah, a Vorpal sword. And that's the second end. What happens when you're rolling that 20 in second end with a Vorpal sword? Sever. You cut off somebody's head. And sure Isn't enough, e so this is, I don't know, is it 5e? Yeah, no, 2e. It, it's 2e, you sever the head on 2 the 2e, you would take that out. Critical. And sure enough, the first freaking roll I rolled was an at against one of the other players. And I'm like, I saw it there with my mouth hanging open, totally shocked. I'm like, I didn't intend on doing that. I didn't think that would happen. Was uh, he this tall? Or was he this was he tall? This tall? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was, started out about six feet and then he ended up about five, what the hell is, how tall is a head? <clears throat> about five foot two. 
we we met we were high level party, so we had to put him back together, but still it was horrifying. But, but his that's head was the facing imp- the wrong way. Oh no, his head was roll his head was rolling on the ground over here and his body was right here, right, right here. So did anyone scream out, go? Uh, believe it or not, that was so long ago. It was before that that guy. It was before soccer was, before, was invented. No, it was before that guy. It was before that announcer did the game. Dinosaurs roamed the earth. Soccer predates goal. Soccer predates that guy. But that's that's actually, as I said, to me, so to talk about twenties and you know, critical successes and failures or twenties and ones. I mean, that's the sort of impact on a game. I mean, it can change your game. Um, But to me, it makes it more exciting. It makes for those really awesome cinematic moments, too. I mean, oh, the other thing, the other 20 I can think of that was extremely dramatic was what's also in second ed, what's the one way you could take out a lich? Whereas one of the few ways is you kill, you break the phylactery and you have to do something like the Sword of the Plains. So do the planes. Well, or my husband's take character. Out to a nice dinner. <laughs> <laughs> my husband's character had a sword of the planes, and we were fighting. Uh, it was it was a bonus lich. It was basically our GM had changed the end of the Tomb of Horrors, so it wasn't just the lich that's in the thing. It was an actual lich with a body, and he had his phylactery in his chest. And my wonderful husband, who usually his dice rolls of shit, rolled a nat 20 with the Sword of the Plains to blow up. He blew everyone else up, too. Basically, he almost TPK'd the party with that because of so the, that's, that's, the that's retributive a strike. Trait. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, that's not a, a very trait. smart lich to have his phylactery. I know. On him. I, didn't get, <laughs> yeah. I didn't get that. It but... was too e guys. It was the extra <laughs> day. They weren't that smart. That was the GM that built it that way. I mean, but it made for a hell of a cinematic at the end of that fight. And we ended up we ended up winning once again, high level party. So just the fact that a couple people survived meant that everyone else up brought back so that's just lazy Holy writing shit. right there yeah that was an amazing much. moment though what about you kyle what about me uh yeah I don't remember you're you're a dm what I'm about your DM. critical I'm fail roles i i particularly i liked uh, how instead of ernie losing a finger or two you made him poison the party. The that entire crew. Oh, Everybody yeah, that do was... a constitution check. <laughs> that was I like that too. I thought that was that was I, a fun uh, one. Even after... though I was victimized by it. <laughs> with that, I just took what the idea behind the skill check was. And so like with the first one, all the skill checks on the ship are to make the people on the crew like you, which may or may not uh, uh, change things later on down the road for you. Um, and with Ernie just rolling that net one while trying to steer the boat, crashing <laughs> it, it's like people are pissed at you right now, Ernie. <laughs> and so you roll a net one on cooking food for everyone. And I'm like, things could get a lot worse, or you could lose a finger. Roll another d20. And I was like, yeah, let it decide. And I was like, oh, a two. Yeah, no, you're gonna poison the crew. <laughs> yeah, and um, your piece and your fellow PCs too. But the idea behind that as well, and um, whether I had actually fully thought it through or not, was no matter what happened in either of those situations, him failing made all the characters laugh, all the uh, the players laugh. But then it gave an opportunity for the player or the characters themselves to step in. And so you had Bran, who uh, uh, himself was poisoned, but he wants to, DJ wants to play this medical character, someone who knows what they're doing. And it's like, okay, half the crew is poisoned. That gives his character a chance to step up because of this natural one and make his character shine a little bit. And that's uh, uh, kind of a cool cooperative thing. And that's honestly where I was thinking, you know, where these failures can make stories happen and give other people chances to uh, chance to shine. It's, you know? it's true. 
That it's true. That was that. That is totally true, and I I like that uh, aspect of yeah. No. Like I said, it turned the most mistrusted character on that ship into the most beloved character on that ship. For now. <clears throat> For now, yeah. For now, until he starts rolling ones. <laughs> he didn't roll any hey, ones. Hey, Brad, I got a splinter on my hand. Could you pick it out? Sure. Pulls out this huge knife and lops off his hand. <laughs> I <hope> know. <laughs> it's gone now. <laughs> You know, one other thing I'll point out about these type of roles, too, is that sometimes it is more fun to fail than it is to succeed. I've, That's I've true. Found. That's you true. know, and some, yeah, just even for the comedic value or although I didn't roll any ones this weekend, I just plain failed. Yeah. But basically, I failed at playing a ship captain and I failed two checks in a row. One, to try to chase down a ship, which I knew was a trap. And two, to fail to, 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 I failed the will save to see through the hallucinatory terrain, and I ran my ship aground. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? And it was a trap because they're baddies. I was talking baddies. to your DM, and uh, we decided. Yeah, sure. That, yeah, yeah, that's exactly. It's it. too funny how that ended up. How I basically did the same thing as Ernie did. In the well, other I mean, game. if you look at the Thursday campaign, you had Ernie. He rolled two natural ones Boy, and yeah. a natural two. You had DJ, he rolled, I know for certain, two natural 20s. Yeah, Maybe did. three. And we're here talking <laughs> about the natural ones that Ernie... And, I mean, some of that may be on the DM for, you know, how do you, how do you role play that natural 20 in a skill check? However, I am trying to learn how to end things on time, and it is nine o'clock. We shot the shit too much this evening. That's okay. Maybe we'll have to do it less. Uh, but let's go around the table real quick. Uh, any final thoughts? Um, I did have a question I was going to ask you, and now I don't remember it. So, uh, Frank, you go ahead and go first, and then we'll hit Carol and then David. And if I remember it, I'll ask it. As DM, uh, you have an obligation to make the story memorable. So when you have an opportunity to handle a crit fail, make it memorable. You don't have to cut something off. You can always cut off their belt and make their trousers fall and then having to use one hand to hold up their pants while they fight, thereby eliminating their bonus bullshit uh, and only giving them one attack. Uh, but make it memorable because, as Carol pointed out, uh, you know, it's great when you nat 20, yeah. but you know what? When you nat one, everybody remembers it. That's what I was going to say. I was going to ask advice you would give to new players who roll that nat one and think of it as like an all crap moment. What are they missing out on their advice to those players? But that pretty much covers as part it. of the final. Yeah. I was going to say, I could, um, you just roll, by the way, you just, just roll with it. I mean, most GMs are not going to kill your characters because you rolled a nat one, okay? Except I mean, for Franks back in the day. <laughs> I mean, maybe. But, but the thing of it is, most, most of the time, the, when it's a nat one, I mean, granted, uh, although I think that, no, I don't think that fumble chart had any instant deaths when you fumbled. I think it, you could hit your friends and you could critically hit your friends and things like that, which I suppose you could kill them if you did enough damage. But, um, but for the most part, if you get you, that one shouldn't, you know, be the end of your character's story. At least if, if there's a good GM telling the story, it won't, he'll make it just fun. And so just, you just roll with it. That's all just roll. You know, if, if, if the GM rolls a nat 20 against you, which is a lot more, could potentially be a lot more lethal. Uh, just roll with it. I mean, it's the way the dice, whether it's the dice giveth and the dice taketh away. So there, there you go. Whoever and, said that uh, is a fucking genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I think genius. that was Plato. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, your final thoughts? Uh, yeah. D uh, DMs make, make them fun. Uh, that's, that's, that's my advice. I mean, like Frank said, make them memorable. Uh, have fun. I mean, uh, a critical failure or a critical success is your time to shine as a DM. You know, you're going to make that game for that person. So 
Use the opportunity. Make it cinematic. Make it, <laughs> Make it a cinematic. Don't kill him. Maim Don't him. Kill him. <laughs> Maim him. Like yeah, there There's was new no wheelchair stuff. Wait, so wait, wait. Go. There was yeah. no nat 20 roll when you friggin' took off Taryn's leg. You just blew her up. I almost killed you outright. Almost. Yeah. But what'd they say about almost? Hand grenade. Count. That was a hand grenade. Hand yeah. grenade. Oh, what's hand it? grenade got, got your leg. Or gotcha. <laughs> Tiddly wings, hand grenades, horse horseshoes, and global thermal nuclear warfare. That's when it counts. Yeah, All that was right. a hand well, grenade, that's man. between the rolls for everybody. Uh, you again can follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. You can visit our YouTube archives. Uh, also, the Twitch ones, if you decide to subscribe to us, giving us more money so we can buy comfy t shirts that Carol mm -hmm. wears. No, these or are the best. You can save your money, go to the YouTube ones, and then you can use that money to go to our RPG swag store where you can buy that kind of <coughs> swag. Yeah, it's also this. very soft. Actually, actually, this is, I mean, said the designs on the back of it. Um, if but this is this is one of the sweatshirts from that too. If somebody out there buys the skateboard, send us pictures because we really want to see that <laughs> the murder hub oh, skateboard. God. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna shred. Uh, or grind. <laughs> or <Achilles. Don't> <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if any of you guys out there want to play, we do have uh, Thursday is Cacophony, which is our oh. soap opera. But then Saturday, we do have the one shot up and running again. Uh, uh, tell your neighbors, tell your friends if they want to have a fun game where they roll yeah. natural ones all the time. <laughs> uh, contact us at Inc on Twitter or at Gmail. Uh, if you want to talk uh, more about us, you have funny stories about critical failures or critical successes. It's probably not the critical successes which we want to hear about. We want to hear about the failures. We want to hear the uh, failures. We want to hear your <laughs> yeah. lost eye. <laughs> or your lost left leg or, you know. There you go. You yeah. can hit us up on the Discord channel. Uh, as far as that, thank you again to our sponsors. Uh, let's start with Adventure Sense this time from Odd Fish Games. Yeah. If your game stinks, uh, get some Adventure Sense. Uh, and they also have the Shine Project. If you are <laughs> getting ready to start a campaign or just write a novel in general, uh, get cooking the with dice. It, ooh, cooking dice. with dice. Yes. Yeah. Don't oh, like that's right. Because you that's own that. I think you own that too. You own that I too. Do. I bought and paid for that one because it was worth it. Um, hey, uh, this Saturday is till death do us part. In it's a wedding. Valentine's Day. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's a wedding. Okay, never mind. There are because Car Carol's probably spaces. not going to play, but David will. So that'll what go do down. you mean? Wait. <laughs> there are now three less spaces. There's only one seat open for this Saturday. I don't know what happened. It just filled up so fast. Uh, and finally, uh, thanks to Pirate Dog Dice, uh, 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 they roll really well or really terribly. One thing's for sure, you're going to get a story out of them. Pirate dog dice. That's a Ooh, nice, nice thing that, I have yeah. ever, ever nice. said about any of our sponsors. Smooth. And they're not even paying us. <laughs> well, they're paying me. They're paying somehow. <laughs> Uh, and again, if you want to hear good ideas, but don't look at our ugly faces, maybe you want to drive and listen to our podcast. I suggest not watching it in that case. You can click the link over in, actually, it's that direction. I looked on Twitch because I'm a dirty cheater, and I was bored of listening to these people yammer on. But you can click on that and get the audio podcast. It puts you right to sleep sometimes. Um, Those are Kyle's me. games. <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, Heidi, I hope I made you proud. It's only eight minutes after this time. Everybody, <laughs> wave and say good night. Good night. We miss you, Christopher Plummer. Oh, yeah, I miss you too. Oh. <laughs>